like live on placemaking the solar punk and uh, live with me now is moments weiter Mara Klein and Andre Zakharov and I'm um, happy to have this channel really looking on placemaking we have examples from a garden mm -hmm. from a roof and from the ground so to say uh, and what does that mean we will find out in the next one hour um, I would love to start with a just a tiny introduction um, of everyone and then um, Momin can start to present his project we can maybe we like we, everybody of you can have a little um, introduction to their projects and then we can discuss together um, in this way um, <laughs> Momin would you like to introduce your project first uh yeah well um hi everyone um and uh thank you for having me here today it's really important platform uh for me this is the first time i'm going to be speaking in public about this project uh we have announced it online but we haven't really got any sort of uh discussion going or in the media or like a part of our website that gone online last week so my name is motman and i'm from uh Jinin. I live between London and, and, and Palestine for the last 10 years now. And uh, I am a theater maker, playwright, and, and an artist. Uh, I grew up in the north of Palestine in a city called Jenin. Uh, and my project will be drawn around my childhood space where I grew up in the forest as a Palestinian Bedouin. Uh, in, 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 in one of the largest forests in the West Bank. Um, so um, this is what my project is about. And um, it's called the Swatat Gardens. Swatat is my family name, but, but the place also called the Swatat because my family were the first people to live in this forest. Uh, and, and, and my grandfather, the one who plants all the trees around this forest which is uh, uh, um, now becoming a rundown forest. And then, and then, um, and then um, I grew up as a, as a child playing, playing all the time in this forest. And then later on in life, I go back to this forest to find it out that it's, it's, it's not accessible anymore. And then here where my project began to, to, um, to, uh, to how to bring back this space to the community. And yeah, so this is what my project would be about, and this is what we'll be talking about. I'm just uh, looking up what is the homepage of your project? Where can we find it? Oh yeah, so basically um, we have two things going on in, in online that you can find the, the, the project. If you go to www.swetatgarden.com, you will find the website. Okay, and then if you go, uh, go fund me, because we 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 are launching a fundraising uh, uh, online things to to have seed funding to start the uh, to to be artists who will be working with us as an architect as a, as an urban planning who will uh, design the whole the whole project for us. If you go to go fund me, I mean if you go to the website you will definitely find the link to GoFundMe and to Playground for Palestine and, and, and other project links there, and you will find all about the project. I, I will repeat it again. It's, it's www.swetatgarden.com. Uh, Jacob, your, your sound. All right. The links are coming up to the stream um, oh, okay. up there. And um, Mara, you've been having quite some success with some weird project and some um, <laughs> taking over a, a shopping center or so to say. Um, <laughs> what wanna... do you mean by weird, Jacob? Weird. <laughs> I mean, shopping centers are weird places, right? It's... <laughs> Yeah, um, so 
So I introduced it just briefly, right? Later uh, we talk a bit more about it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so thanks for having me, um, Jacob. Uh, really happy to be here also with Momin, who I met a long time ago in Janine in 2011. So a uh, small world. Um, yeah, so my name is Mara Klein and I'm an artist and part today uh, as part of the collective Operation Himmelblick, which means Operation Sky View, which Andre, the third uh, speaker, <laughs> is also part of, by the way. Um, yeah, and so we're a collective of uh, people from dis different disciplines, architects, urban planners, um, artists. Who, uh, whose aim is to reclaim um, urban space that is underused, namely rooftops. And um, today I will talk mostly about a project that we did this summer um, because it illustrates uh, what, what our intention is um, with this project of bringing together peoples of the neighborhood. But I'll talk about it later a bit, uh, in detail about the weird, <laughs> the weird experience. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Andre, what are you up to? Hey, hello. Yeah, so what I'm mostly involved in and spending pretty much all of my days on is we are, I'm part of an initiative which is creating a community land trust in Berlin. So it's a foundation which um, buys ground, so it collects resources, monetary resources and buys land um, in order to give it in leasehold contracts to groups, initiatives, cooperatives um, under the condition that they um, open it up to as many people as possible, um, that they that they are social criteria, like when they, for example, rent flats, um, or that the neighborhood has a has a say um, when talking about how using the space, for example, commercial spaces, like what what is needed actually in the neighborhood. And through this, decoupling it from the market and creating a different type of yeah, commons governance um, on how urban space mostly, we're starting here in Berlin, but we're open to areas around. We want to make the connection between areas around Berlin and Berlin, but we are limited to Berlin. And yeah, so this is this is a project. It's called Stadt Boden Stiftung. Um, so Community Land Trust Berlin. That's how you find us. Um, great. I think this gives us... Uh interesting you know starting point to see to yeah to to go into this discussion what is the practices or the different angles you can um take on on really like on the practice of placemaking and um in the in the telegram chat that you can join um the first recommendation for collaboration was directed to moment uh, to to collaborate with some open source seed project um that's a cool cool comment i i'd love to hear a bit more on the on the context and on the difficulties and on the maybe on the dream that you have moment uh, around your your vision your vision and what this this dream can how this can dream can vitalize the community um and the neighborhood um yeah basically um uh um you know like it's uh, growing up in 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 a place like palestine like the west bank is not an easy uh uh place to to grow up but this is there is no time to to complain in the same time so there is only time here to make things work and and to make things happen in the best possible way otherwise you're going to end up in a in a in a, in a like a, in a lot of uh, complicity that that will not be helpful to neither yourself or you, or your um, mental health or 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 your sort of community engagement outreach uh, 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 facility or, or or communication. So um, when I was a kid, uh, growing as a Bedouin, my only uh, space. It was uh, available for me to play. It was this forest, and I was very lucky. Uh, unlike other kids who have to be growing up in in a refugee camp, which is is built from concrete, which there is no any little green area for them to have access to. So I was w way way lucky, and this is where the whole 
the whole things for me, why I care about greenery and, and space and community engagement. Uh, and, and one of my earliest memory as a childhood, it was, it was going, waking up in a summer holiday from school and going to the forest and creating my own universe there by building toys, building cities, building like uh, shops, like from, from trash, from rubbish that people have left behind there and make it recycle and, 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 and create all my sort of uh, like chi inner childhood uh, uh, playful space. And then one day um, I remember that this forest also saved my life. So um, one day I was uh, during the uh, second intifada, which is pretty harsh military intifada. Uh, it, was a, it was a lockdown, which is funny that we all have experienced lockdown now in a way, but uh, I have been experienced lockdown since I was a kid, since I was like, since really I opened my eye to this life, uh, to a military lockdown. And, and, and then one day I was, um, it was just maybe just begun to go to school by myself and you know this memory is very nice memory you would never leave this memory behind and then i was coming back from school by myself and then i experienced um, a heavy military uh markava right next to the forest and the forest was my way to school it sounds like a uh, uh, spring awakening you know uh, and, and, and this is where I discovered everything in my life. You know, I discovered my, my, my sexual sense of, of things. I discovered my, my dreams. I discovered who I am. I discovered my sense of smell. I discovered my sense of learning. Um, unnecessarily um, learning process, you know. Uh, I discovered everything. So, and then one day I was walking there and then um, I always also had animals. I always have dogs. I always, I always grow up having horses and donkeys, and and the house of those animals. It was always this forest. And then one day, um, I have to basically, uh, I was shot at by a sniper, because it was sort of a beginning of of a lockdown, of a curfew lockdown, military curfew lockdown, and then I have to run to the forest. And, and, and this is the only way I was basically saved my life. Many times, not only one, not only twice, many times that I was going back from school and then I, was, I, will, I will encounter military soldier and then I'll be shot at and then I will have to run to this forest. So all my sad, beautiful, amazing, crazy memory is in there. This year, um, I went to Palestine to do a documentary film about something different, about, um, about um, a theater maker called Giuliano Merchamis, who were my teacher and who were assassinated with a German company. I, was, I went down to Palestine early this year in February, end of February, to, to do a documentary uh, with, the, with, the, with the Munich Film Fund. And, and, then, uh, and then the lockdown happened, so the German crew went back to Germany and as a Palestinian who holding a Palestinian passport to have a lack of freedom of movement, I got stuck in Jenin again. Not stuck, but I got sort of not able to move again, which it was, it was um, sort of um, um, a bit annoying, but in the meantime, it was good because I thought it was an important time. Later on, I find out that it was an important time for me to reconnect to, to this place again. And then um, I have a daughter, she came to visit me with, with, uh, with her mom that halfway through the lockdown. And then my daughter only uh, was turning two years when she was in Jenin. And then she always wanted to go to, to a playground. And then I, I wanted to take her to a playground in Jenin and which is the forest. And I found out all the, break, all the equipment in the playground in that forest it completely destroyed and really extremely dangerous for kids to be around because they are metal sharp, uh, plastic, uh, broken plastic and really sharp. 
So, um, and then I decide to basically to investigate the whole things and to have this project uh, back to the community and, and to work on this, com in, in this project and to bring it back. In the meantime, around all of this, in the middle, there was also a facility for, 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 for all kinds of people that access to this place, but also destroyed, like, like a stairs or steps or, or a small walkway to disabled people or, 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 or like, um, or the blind, because there was, there is also a blind school next to the forest. So the blind student can go and, 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 and enjoy the forest, but absolutely it's all destroyed and, 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 and left behind. Um, so, um, so I, I thought that was a good responsibility for me to take on and, and to, to, to speak about this project, at least to speak about it, at least to, to, to raise awareness about it in the local community. So I start to hold groups of meeting in the forest with, with my local community, who is basically partly my family, partly my neighbors who I grew up with, you know? And then they all agreed that, that this place need to be redone and this place need to be accessible to everybody again. And then I sat down with the local government there and, and we had a great agreed that they're gonna give us the space, which is they get, now we have the space. Uh, we about to form a contract with them. I don't know how long, it might be for 10 years, 15 years. Uh, and then also in the meantime, there is an open air abandoned theater there that once was full of life for kids there. There was a lot of clowning show, a lot of circus, show there's a lot of um, musical show there was a lot of fire camp around it there and, and all of this so now we are basically um in this case i i start to get in touch with a friend and a friend of a friend and then i find out there's a place called playground for palestine that they have a they have a community group in in new york in america and they have a community groups in in london so we got in touch with the team in london because i based in london now and and the uh, team in London, they love the idea, and then they pick up on, on this project to be their responsibility of funding the equipment for the playground only. But what we're looking for is we're looking for more than the playground. We're looking for, uh, for, um, for a place to be accessible to all people from all different walk. Uh, we're looking for uh, um, to, 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 um, to renovate the theater space. And, and to make it accessible again and to make it uh, into like a theater or, or an art hub, a community space. We're looking to establish a program for alternative outdoor self-learning education about the history of the space and about what is in the space uh, and what stories had happened in this space. So uh, now we have got the fund for the equipment which is a good news uh, for the playground, and then this is why we launch we launch another uh, another like a seed funding that we can pay artists and architect and 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 thinker and 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 and, and um, from the community and from from uh, from the international artist community to join this group because we want people to be paid to do this job and and and. Um, um, so yeah, this is basically part one of the project. Yeah, now we are interested in part two, of course. Um, <laughs> but I uh, also I want to open up for questions, um, both to like you can post them in the Telegram chat and um, Mara and Andre that are here as well. If you have questions to the project um, that are burning, um, please feel free to to share. Yeah, I have a question, I mean, um, I wonder, like, because Janine also has, like, seen, like, a few projects that have, you know, the Freedom Theatre, but also Cinema Janine, which came from, like, completely an outsider's perspective coming in and creating something yep. um, without, like, real knowledge of, of the place. Um, I just wondered how people feel about you, like, returning and kind of taking this initiative if you, if you feel like there's quite a positive ground to, to build this or how, yeah, how's your experience been with this? 
I think I think your question is a very good question because main our main obstacle here is the sustainability. And 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 in every step we take in here, we always having the sustainability question above our mind, you know, around our mind, like in a surround sound, you know. Uh, and um, and yeah, you're right. Basically, the Freedom Theatre, if we want to have a look at, at this two perfect examples, the Freedom Theatre and Cinema Janine, okay? And, and the two of them have, they give us the different answer, which is a great sad and a great for our project. Uh, sad in a way that uh, the, the tragedy, what happened in the Freedom Theatre is obviously... Um, the people of who were in the first line benefit from the Freedom Theatre have lost the main tour, you know, the legend man who created the whole idea and vision around it, okay? And, and, and who basically taught me to become who I am now, you know? So we lost him, and, and that's, that's for me now a lesson to learn how safety and security in working in this environment is the most important thing, you know? Uh, but on the other hand, the Freedom Theatre, in terms of sustainability, is still working. You know, it's working in a way that is adapt now to where the Freedom Theatre is today. It doesn't have to be necessarily working in the same speed or the same idea or the same uh, formulation that it used to be working when Giuliano was alive. Because Giuliano was a one-man show. He were, he were, he knew what he wants. Okay. I wouldn't agree that the Freedom Theater will be still working exactly how the same energy would when Giuliani was alive, because Giuliani is not there anymore. So we need to have a new identity, which is now they're working on it, I believe, which is great. The the saddest, the, the other sad and also good for, for, for a new project to come with somebody who have a knowledge and an out, out, out outside eyes and an inside eyes to the whole things which is now Cinema Janine, okay? Which is, I don't know, maybe some people know, some people doesn't know that Cinema Janine have been bulldozed down to the ground and, and been replaced to a shopping mall center, a sheep shopping mall center, terrible design. Um, and, and this is sad now, okay? Here is like, we wanna stand on this question, what the sustainability of this project gonna be, okay? So, I wouldn't say that the reason why the cinema genine were, were, were bulldozed and run down because it was mainly uh, foreign uh, young creative people who come to the, to the place without having a full knowledge of the culture and the community understanding of things. I wouldn't say that was the reason. I would only say the reason was there was a gap between, between building a, cin a cinema space engineering and between how to keep how to keep this sustainable okay i remember in when when cinema engineering opened and and when i was a student at the freedom theater in the same time i used to finish what my my school time at the freedom theater as an actor and then walking back to my flat which is opposite cinema engineering okay and seeing like 70 people working from all different backgrounds from Germany, from mainly Germany, obviously, but it was also other people working there and like Palestinian local young people working. And it was, it was sort of refreshing. It was like giving a big, massive, a huge hope. Like for me, it was like, if it was the case, it's still the same thing. I wouldn't have left Janine, you know? Uh, it's opened up a lot of like dreams for us to, to see all of this visual in that time. But obviously it was no plan. There was no plan. There was no, the, the plan was, is just for tomorrow, you know, or after tomorrow. The plan wasn't even how to keep this space sustainable, how to keep, how to use, how to take an advantage of the fund that the cinema genie have received from an NGO organization or from the German government that time, okay, and to make it circles, recycling inside the, 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 the building itself, rather than is just spending money and goes and never come back, you know? So, and here where I want to say about death of the Ed for Palestine, I think is sort of very close 
together. Like the Ed and the death is the same things for Palestinian now. Obviously, Palestinian who work with a big NGO fund, you know. But what I want to do in this term, and 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 if we want to go back to this new project, um, I think it's much easier because first I speak the language easily. I born there. I I know the community. I have been uh, in, involved in a lot of different level of community engagement project in there. Okay. And I think I felt that young people in the community there look up for what this guy who used to be very controversial working with the Freedom Theater, now he went away and come back. What he want to do in this space is he's going to do another controversial thing or he's going to do another thing. But this time I'm not coming back by myself. This time we're working with, as a collective, we're working with a lot of young people, male and female and different gender from the ground itself that they're the one who are gonna hold the, the ground together, you know? And, uh, and we still open for, for international collaboration, obviously, because this is very important for us. Um, so it's, it's, this question is, is, is does have no one side answer, is have, is have a perfect example to look at, which is cinema engineering and the Freedom Theater. I... I find it super interesting and also sad to hear that the uh, the whole work that went into building the cinema Janine just got replaced. But I mean, projects come and go and rise again. Francesco Candura. <laughs> uh, the question eh, of sustainability vita, is molti anni, I mean, eh, mi it's great. I mean, what this is radio. revealing. I um, I would laugh uh, with a, like looking at the time to invite Mara to to share on your project and then um, we can come back together around the commonalities and challenges of our, of our project in the very end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you, Momin, for explaining. I find it super interesting, this question of, uh, yeah, who, who, who creates what where, you know, like uh, how, how are you anchored in a space? Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk about Operation Himmelblick, and um, as I mentioned before, we're a collective which is Berlin-based of a, a group of uh, interdisciplinary peoples, and uh, our aim is to um, reinvigorate spaces that are not used so often, which are rooftops, um, which, uh, <laughs> which are uh, precious, precious spaces in cities uh, that have little, little space that people can share. And um, I would like to share today very briefly um, one of our um, projects that we um, did this summer, which was like a pilot, the first test phase for this group. So we went to Chemnitz uh, in Saxony and uh, we were part of a festival called the Begehungen, which is uh, the biggest cultural festival there. And it's run, I just want to mention it because I find it uh, really yeah, it's a really great festival. It's run by a group of uh, volunteers that come back every year for the last 17 years, which I think says a lot about their dedication and also the quality of a, of a festival. And the idea of this festival is to reinvigorate uh, spaces which um, are underused or which um, people don't go to. So in the past years, they've been to a brewery, prison, lots of spaces that are uh, normally not really accessible or not of interest. And um, this year they were in the Hecat uh, area, which is a huge area of prefabricated buildings, um, prefabricated buildings in German Plattenbau, um, which a lot of people know from GDR architecture. And um, the Hecat was actually the third largest in the whole of the GDR, so it's massive. And it was built in the 70s on this utopian idea of providing uh, good housing for workers. So enough light, enough space, um, access to all um, important amenities, uh, Grundversorgung. And now um, since the fall of the wall and in the last 20 years, it's really um, turned into quite the opposite. Uh, it's become very empty. There's an aging population which doesn't really have access to amenities because everything is moving out. Um, so there's a lot of space there, but uh, not so much room for innovation. And um, this year the, the Begeung went there and they went to um, one huge plateau, one huge prefabricated building and asked artists to reinvigorate the space. 
and also an old shopping mall. So in German, in East German, that's Konsum, which is just the name for a small shopping mall. And they asked us to um, do something with the roof. So this was a flat roof. And uh, we went, we came with ideas, but really our idea in general is to find out what is needed and what is dreamt of in that space. Um, and so we came with a few ideas, but most importantly to us was to really find out what people there wanted. And so we came with these research questions, like what do you dream of, what utopias could be realized on roofs, and basically what is missing. And to our surprise, you know, dreams can also be very grounded. And um, people mostly said that they lack the basic things that make a life kind of easier, which is a pharmacy, an ATM, benches to sit on to meet. Um, some people mentioned beauty in public space. And so after this research phase, which included walking through the streets and asking people and also a rooftop dinner where we invited people from all over Chemnitz to dine in this uh, on this roof. We collected these impulses and we built a spaceship, <laughs> which um, to us represented um, utopia, you know, utopia of this area, utopia of generally city planning and urban planning and what people dream of, like going far. And around this spaceship we built benches which were in part made out of the material of the roof because we knew that this roof was going to be taken down in a month or two the whole shopping mall would be destroyed because there's too much empty space there empty housing empty buildings and so we used parts of the roof to build these benches around the spaceship and so people could come and sit on these benches meet and see each other look at the spaceship and also listen to a sound installation that talked, uh, that basically condensed everything that we'd heard on the streets. And uh, this was our aim to kind of like combine the very grounded needs of a community, which are kind of, um, yeah, they're simple. And yeah, they're just simple needs, um, which, which are really important. And then on the other side, this idea of like, yeah, where do we dream to? And roofs are a great place for this. And so the festival was four days and there were 4,000 people, I think. And this was only due to uh, the pandemic. They had a limit of 1,000. So 1,000 came a day. 4,000 people came and sat on this roof. And um, I really, I could feel that people were really, really touched by this because on the one hand, roofs have a, they, there's just a magic in roofs. And on the other hand, um, people felt heard because we'd come there as artists from another place, but we really took time to find out what people actually wanted. And we took it seriously, you know, when people say we want benches to sit on, that sounds, you know, like nothing, but actually if people want benches, <laughs> then why not have benches? And um, after this festival was over, um, what was really important to us, which also addresses this question of, sustainability that we talked about, Mami. Um, yeah, what was really important to us was also that something remains. And obviously memories remain when you do like a something like a festival for a few days. But these benches were then also bought by the city of Chemnitz and they will put them up in the Hecate area so that people can still sit on these benches, which um, are part, partly made out of this consume this shopping mall that no longer exists or that will no longer exist but the trace remains where people sit is actually the physical remain of this shopping mall um yeah and this was like the, the first time that we tested out this kind of um way of doing things as a collective but we're all based in berlin and uh, this city obviously has um, incredible potential and is a fast moving place where there is a lot of question of like public space being um yeah being not accessible to the community that is there um and so now we are planning our next project which is uh, hopefully going to play take place this summer and also be longer because our aim is really on the one hand to do short interventions which are interesting and they're exciting and they make people maybe you know think or excite them 
But really our aim is to create spaces on rooftops that are sustainable where people can come together and then take it over. So we want to be the impulse givers, just I, I guess a bit like Mumi and what you were saying about the forest. You want to be the impulse giver, but then yeah, in the long good. term, we really no. want people to take this over, the people of this building. And so what we're looking at now is a, a building in Mitte, a Platte, which has around 80 plus people living there. And um, we're looking at building a space on the roof that is modular so that it can be also shifted around, changed according to needs if we do like a debate or a concert or a film evening. Um, there will be rooftop gardening and also our aim is to really have it green up there because this is another thing about cities that the dark, uh, the dark roofs obviously take away a lot of the or store a lot of the, the heat. Um, so we need greener roofs in general. And um, to then start this process that people start taking care of their own building. So we will be there in the beginning, but really on the long term, we would like these roofs to then become what the people want them to be. Um, yeah, and I think this is what I find really exciting about this initiative is that it combines something artistic with a social and creation with community. So this idea of really we want to combine functional and beautiful because they do need each other. Um, yeah, and there's really a magic on roofs. I'm sure that many of you know <laughs> how roofs are um, magical because there's air there, there's a sense of possibility. And I remember last summer in Chemnitz when people were sitting on this roof, which was quite um, low down, so you could still see trees, it really felt like a market square and market squares have something, you know, really special where people come together, but this is a market square in the air and there's so much potential there. There's some kind of magic that, yeah, I guess the ground is harder to, to find that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just uh, lastly, just to say, um, we really want to stay independent of um, organizations. So the idea is really that we offer something to a community, but we don't want to be a provider of services for a certain housing company or et cetera. The idea is really that we would like to use funds that are given to us, but really stay independent in the way we design things and also in the, yeah, in the narrative that we create up there, because this is really not up to an agenda, but up to the community that is is around there. Yeah. yeah, thank you for bringing up this challenge around the funding as well. I mean, um, creating up places like tapping into this untapped potential of roofs and making comments out of rooftop places in general is one thing, but also like creating a space where people actually can come together, obviously, um, is doing a huge service to local community, to democracy, to like to um, to the well-being of, of of people, and um, yeah, how to how to support that is an, an interesting challenge. I uh, again invite everybody listening to to get in touch or ask questions via the Telegram chat, and um, I before we like go wild just uh, <laughs> mingling between the projects. Maybe Andre, uh, you can um, give us some update on what's happening with Stadtboden Stiftung. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, I tried to make it quite quickly because um, there's already so much very super interesting content there um, and really nice to just keep on talking. Like for just we, saying, we have a little bit time to prolong our session um, because we started uh, like seven minutes late, but okay. this is, so you have to know that you have time to share. Sure. Thank you. Mm. So, um, yeah, but what, what are we doing? We are an um, initiative um, mixed out of people who come from neighborhood initiatives in Berlin, from working in cooperatives, um people working who've been like working in academia and kind of trying to find alternative ways of ownership questioning kind of kind of how the capitalist market in our cities destroys communities and and people who are active in politics quite a diverse group 
um, kind of came together, also mostly people who didn't know each other before. And um, we came together um, with the idea of creating something called, like something inspired by the Community Land Trust. So, so first, before talking about this organization, inspiration of a community land trust, I want, I want to talk again or more deeply about like what's actually the problem, what, what, what brings us together is kind of a problem that we see in Berlin is that in the last 10 years, um, Berlin has ch changed uh, very quickly and in an accelerating speed and um, spaces are becoming uh, less and less available. Like it's really an explosion of kind of capitalist um, exploitation of the ground in Berlin, um, ground rents are rising, prices for housing, commercial spaces are rising, local shops are being kicked out and replaced by kind of multinationally operating startups and funded startups um, on companies. It's kind of all like a shift, um, which all goes in the way of like creating the highest profit from um, the, the space, which is available. And this is really affecting our neighborhoods, it's affecting our communities when very important jobs are leaving, when places where, where childcare uh, places used to be, they cannot pay the rent anymore, they're being replaced, like um, neighborhood shops, which kind of have been there for 30 years and there's a community of people regularly going to the same cafe, knowing each other and all of this being threatened. And this is, this is kind of the, the, the problem we are like facing in this type of, yeah, where the only thing that counts is making the highest profit on the land as long as it is in, in private ownership and there's so much pressure, like quite opposite to what we experienced in Chemnitz where there was lots of empty space and it's really the question, okay, how do you create inspiration and do something with empty space? Here we have the opposite of like, there's so much pressure on creating something. And so we came together and were inspired by this idea of community land trust. And community land trust um, are a type of organization um, which acts for many different places um, or houses, but in a specific location, like in a specific city. And they, are, they have three principles, community, land, and trust. So community means it's a community-run organization. So it's an organization where people who are, live there, who live in the neighborhood, um, they can directly become in part of the organization and vote for the people who are in the decision-making power. So there's a democratic uh, structure in the bylaws and it's like fixated. It's also, it's about land. So that's really important for us as community land trust. We, we, we think we need this kind of civil society run kind of neighborhood based um, organization that owns the land. It doesn't have to do all the things on top of the land but it's about kind of owning the land and making sure it stays out of a kind of a market, out of being traded to whoever can make the highest money, but actually take that land in the organization and then um, give contracts like for 50, 60, 100 years to groups or cooperatives which use the land, but for a social purpose or a neighborhood purpose. So for example, say, okay, we, we own this land, but now we give the, the, the house on top, we give it to a cooperative or an initiative um, and they run the house for the next years, decades, but they have to comply to some uh, like conditions. Like, for example, if there's a big commercial space, they cannot just rent it to the highest price. They have to ask the neighborhood what is actually needed here. Or for the flats, they cannot just give them to anyone. They have to give the flats, at least a big amount of them to people who actually need them the most. Like who, they, they cannot be like, mm, we just want these type of people here. No, they have to be open and accessible to people who actually need these flats and who are like, have the most problems kind of on this capitalist market in Berlin. And this is the concept of trusteeship, like the land, the trust, that the, the community land trust is acting as a trustee and holding the land in trusteeship um, for groups, in communities who have otherwise not the possibility to decide what happens in the city because they don't have the monetary resources to like buy land themselves. So these are the three principles and we are finding a way of making that happen in Berlin and we are just in the moment of creating a foundation. Um, it will be like we will hand in all the papers in January 
we have collected 150,000 euros as a starting capital kind of for making the first projects possible. But it's really about um, kind of a, a long-term vision. Like there are foundations which operate like this, like ours, um, which are not non-profit organizations. Um, and they started, one of them started 30 years ago in Switzerland with uh, 20 or 14,000 francs. And now they, um, they manage more than 300 million francs. And it's really this idea of creating a foundation which starts slowly, but it, it only is not just for one property because it's actually from each property giving a little, little, little money for like solidarity and to make the next project possible. And through this grow and kind of be a revolving land trust, which not in five years time, but in 10, 20, 30 years, really can have an impact in the city, but at the same time stays democratically accountable to the people who use the space, to the people who, who also are in the neighborhood and who people who are active for a different type of city. So this in short is what we are kind of working on and maybe to make it more clearer, like what could be a project, for example, like example, like I think there are two types of projects which are, we are already working on um, at the moment where we're already in negotiations. One is a, quite a simple one. It's where there's a people who inherited a, a multifamily house. There are like um, 20 or 15 people living in this house. And two of them are the people who inherited it. Um, but they, they want to give this house. They don't want to deal with managing it and dealing with all the rents and repairs. They want to give it in good hands. And um, we negotiating with them a way to give it to the foundation, kind of they can stay there, live there forever, like they have uh, the rights secured, but we also make sure that the other tenants um, are treated well and the, there's a small space which can be used as a neighborhood space and make sure that it's unlocked for the neighborhood. Now it's not used. So this is one kind of quite simple way of kind of securing a house, securing the low rents there, securing that everybody can stay there and that it's not sold to the highest price to some investment company from Luxembourg, um, which you, there's no face anymore. It's just acts for highest profit. The other example is there's a commercial property in, uh, in a, a bit outside of the center. Um, and it's really at the edge of the residential areas. It's like an inner commercial area. And there are three um, centers, like how do you would like housing centers, like a refugee center where, where people kind of, are, refugees who arrived in Germany uh, are put in, like not their own choice, like they are put in there, um, can live everything, but they live really at the edge of the city. And it's really, there's nothing around. It's very like a dire situation. There's another center where people who are, homeless and alcoholics. And then there's a big house where only people live who work short term in Berlin. And then there's this, there's a very empty public space around. Um, there's no amenities, nothing. And there is a house which we try to buy and convert into something that's actually of use for the people living there, like um, kind of creating a point of connection between people living in the residential areas in these different uh, housing um, centers. Um, yeah, and secure affordable rents for, yeah, for, for social purposes, for organizations that try to make something different. Um, yeah, so these are the examples. And I think what is, what is it about is about this idea of, of breaking up ownership of like not thinking about something as owned by one person, one organization, but really involving as many people as possible when talking about something and giving them rights to have a say. And through this, maybe, you know, being guided by this principle of a commons of like, how can we create this land, which, which should be a commons. I mean, we cannot multiply it or produce new land. Like how can we, how can we most possibly treat it as something that is commonly owned? Um, yeah, this is the, the, the vision. Um, and that's what we are working on step by step, trying to re realize the first projects next year. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I love this initiative a lot. And I, uh, I was walking in the park today and was, you know, in, in some way the park is a commons and then you have the stories of people 
buying a land and really accepting thereby the kind of custodianship that they take for this land. And um, I, especially in the in in the city, or so I find it so interesting to in, invite people into like active custodianship for their places. And I feel like this mechanism can empower this relationship from you to your to your neighborhood or to you to the place you're you're in. And um, I mean, obviously, Berlin is there's a lot of like business happening in the moment and uh but i mean still from the visionary power of this project i find it so strong that i'm wondering like what is the challenges uh for for places to actually become um community land trusts and why is there not more and more and more <laughs> places already like falling in your in your way and then just to add to this question maybe like um your own understanding of agency you gave an example where you where you said you want to go into shaping the place yourself um as a way or like where's the activist where's the city land trust how much are you giving an impulse in the same way that mara said you want to like give an impulse or like yeah you you feel the question mark somehow <laughs> yeah so, so there are two two things. So the first one, you're referring to um, the challenges. So I mean, there, I mean, the the message ch challenges that for buying kind of a piece of land, kind of funding it, like it's millions. Like we're talking about millions of euros for kind of a property in Berlin, which is perfect. Like it's crazy. Like like it's yeah. So it's really about how do we gather the amount of funds we need. Um, find people who give maybe loans for very great conditions because they want to support it. It's really about kind of collecting the money to even be possible to make things happen. Um, so this is the one big challenge. The second challenge is always kind of work. We are, we are already a group of um, 20 active people um, and many other supporters. Like we have 140 people who gave money and who are also feeling like supporters of the project and um, just in the small group of 20 already to work as a community, like to like, like not as a community, like work as a, as a group and make collective decisions, um, look at hierarchies, powers, kind of how do you deal with different interests, different, like where should we start, like Berlin is big, what kind of projects should we first work on, where we should we put our resources, our energy, um, it, that's, that's always a big challenge, like just kind of if you want to make many people voices heard you also have to find a way of mediating these voices and kind of still come together um so these are two two of the challenges which come to my mind right away we are working on them i think we 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 are dealing with them but they keep on being challenges and we always have to find new ways of dealing with them and the second question is um, this role of yeah initiative versus um being maybe an instrument which can be appropriated by the, the the neighborhood initiatives and it's something in between like it's a quite a it's sometimes more the one role sometimes more the other i think in the beginning we have to be a bit active and show some initiative because you have to show what you can do what the instrument can be used for to then be approached but there are already many initiatives approaching us and being like hey we have this house in our neighborhood we want to this and this happen like how how do we make that happen like how can you support us so i think making the first projects possible there will be others coming and i think because we always separate the ownership of the land from the ownership of the house on top it always also restricts our power like there are many things maybe we have a certain vision but we cannot decide everything like we always have to find somebody like a neighborhood group which works together with a cooperative um, in shaping actually what's happening on the place. Like we can, we can only set the parameters, but we always cooperate with others. And by having to always cooperate with others, it also kind of, we might, we might have to have some vision to extract the first groups and the people and the neighborhood, depending always on the place. Maybe they are already there, like there are houses where there is already a very strong vision and it's really us just bringing in the finances and kind of the long-term stability and being like, we have a structure which enables you to make your goals, which you already have, to 
um, make them long lasting and give them a structure which is not only valid for the next 15 years, but actually can work for 100 years um, or more. So um, it, it depends quite, quite a lot. Um, but I think the idea, there is some initiative we bring in, but um, it's also restricted because we are not the people realizing the project in the end, the every day of the project. We only set help, set out the conditions. And we always have to cooperate. And I think that's good that we always have to cooperate because otherwise it gives too much power to us. I, I love the aspect of timing, you know, organizing always is, is also like synchronized by, by the factor of time. And sometimes it's easy to have a short time span where you like produce something and sometimes it, 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 it opens up a big thing to have a, like a long, longer window of, yeah, operating. Um, speaking about time, our time is getting <laughs> uh, very short now before we um, get ready for the next panel. But uh, I would love to hear if you have some, if you want to share some inspiration that just came up for you in this moment, listening to each other. And um, obviously, I want to just get a glimpse of moment into part two. <laughs> This was a great cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, Maybe Mara first. You have uh, you have some fresh insights. Fresh insights, no pressure. Okay, fresh insights. Um, yeah, I mean, as I was listening to Andre and before to Momin as well, and just thinking about like what these three initiatives have in common. I think, especially this year, for um, many parts of the world where this pandemic changed everyday lives and maybe also perspectives on place. I think we are um, coming to more of a sense of like growing belonging, you know. Um, I like this word belonging in the sense that there is longing in there, which is normally far away. But I think um, a lot of us are also realizing that a lot of what is there and what we need is around us, that we don't have to go too far and that it's about committing to this place and making it better. So I think this is what I find really beautiful about these three initiatives is that there is something about a shared um, commitment to take responsibility for growing. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, wow. <laughs> it's like so interesting to hear about a project in a, in a sort of a metropolitan city, you know, like we're talking about like a an early planning city like Jenin, and then we're talking about Berlin, like a, a massive metropolitan uh, city. Well, I, I thought about like, obviously like the, 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 the roof, roof garden project in a city which is full of, uh, of, of, of uh, like, uh, you know, like big businesses and, and building and, and um, And stuff like this. I think I think this is sort of a very uh, utopian escape out of 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 uh, of like. Uh, I mean, what well, Berlin is still have a like a, a, a lot of nice, uh, like nice uh, uh, playground and, and greenery side of it that where people can escape a little bit the city and 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 just go for a long walk or something, which is nice, you know. As well as here in London. Um, But but to have to have something easy access in in, in in your own building, not your own building, but the building that you basically live there, and it's absolutely amazing. And to have like um, I love the idea of of a, of a dining table. The 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 idea of the dining table, I think, is is very interesting in this in this kind of like um, uh, very diverse community now in Berlin and 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 I think oh, there's a there's a lot of there you know there's a lot of so much to be done there so much to be uh, work around community that like how to make sense of community I think this is a good question about about like a metropolitan city you know and a futuristic city sort of and and, and a very capitalist in the meantime as as Andrew was saying and I, I think I think I just the only thing come from my mind it was it was like 
I think it's, we, we, we working in a complete reversal project. Like for me, I, I want Jinning to become very uh, invested in, you know, I want, I wouldn't say I want Jinning to become a capitalist. It, there's, there's no doubt, there's no question in there because there's the landscape and the politics around it, it, it will not make it that way, you know, which is, I'm very relaxed from this point. But in the meantime, there is no investment in Janine. So sort of how to work around, juggle between these two spaces and how to switch it in the meantime, you know, and how to look what underneath this, like all of this, how to bring it properly up in, in a small little city that suffer from a, from a long period of a lockdown of a military lockdown, this, this is a big question. But for me, it's like the second part of the project is a lot of a questioning. It's a lot of like, how can we move left the whole community into a new different level by programming a lot of different new visual, visual program uh, to the community into this forest side of Jinin City. And, and, and how to lift them from the dystopia to, to utopia, you know? And how can we do the journey from dystopia to, to utopia without harming any things as we had these two fantastic examples, which is the Freedom Theatre and Cinema Genie, that both end up costing a lot of harm to the people who work there. And how can we do the safe journey again from, from dystopia to utopia and 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 begin left the community because because i feel as as a member of a palestinian community from jenin i do feel that once upon a time jenin and the west bank was there they were there there was there was a lot of happiness there was a lot of lightness there was a lot of freedom and 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 and, uh, and expression and, and, and sense of individuality, you know? And how can, so this space, I believe in this space to be the hub of a factory of argument, discussion, ideas, and, 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 and formulating and, and, and research on from like small that. things no, to I'm big things, you know? And um, okay. I think the people there are, have been abandoned from so many I small, for beautiful time. things. Thank you, Daniel. You know, over to you. And how can we bring back those things into? And I think this is space is the right space for it. I'm not talking about a building here. I'm not talking about theater or cinema. Engineering. I'm talking about like an environmental space, which is an open, massive, huge space that can be done a lot there for people to come. And and how can we lead? And 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 and. Like all of this question for me, this is what the, the next thing, and how can we see this question being questioning by the community there? And how can we leave the space between the, 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 the creator and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the performer, which is the community, you know? And which, in which time can we leave this gap and to, to see it in a foggy, Min mingling and, uh, and 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 trying to struggle and trying to succeed and all of this. So I think I think this is for me the the next step of the project is to um, to let people let go with a lot of like uh, a lot of things in and 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 a relief and here where we can have a new beginning, you know. Yeah. And I think the same, I mean, the, the, the thing with, with, um, with the housing things in, in, in Europe now and, and Berlin and, and the ownership, you know, I think it's a big question also, you know, I think, I think this is what I meant by reversal. That it's not a big question in Palestine because by nature in Palestine, you have to have a house. You have to own a house. There's no way. You have to have a garden. There's no way. You know, um, and and now like I have so many friends of mine in Berlin that been renting for the last thirty years, 
And when I, I raised the question about, are you planning to own your own space in Berlin? They would be like, uh, they're not sure about it. Um, and, and also uh, the idea of like rich people coming and poor people have to leave to the edge of the area, you know? Not all the refugees who are arriving to the edge of the city, but also the people who have born in this neighborhood, their kids can't afford to keep in living in this neighborhood. So, and that will create this, uh, uh, um, 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 a family saga. And, 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 you know, like all of this question, and there is no right, there is no wrong, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of a question in there for me, it's, as well as making it fact and making it functional and work, you know? Thank you. Andre, any reflections um, or words of goodbye? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, thanks so much for the, yeah, just inspiration, this time to talk. Like, I find it super inspiring. I mean, also very grounding, you know, just talking with you. I mean, it's like, yeah, there are also these different realities. And um, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, we all have our local struggles um, and kind of see what can we do here locally and i think this is important to not always yeah i think you have to act where you are grounded to and where you're connected to and where you where, where you're connected but it's also see like what kind of um yeah solidarity across spaces can you create and kind of what kind of possibilities we have here what kind of privileges we have here how can we connect with other other spaces um, in a mutual exchange and learn from each other. Um, yeah, that's just as a, as a point to go forward, but otherwise I'm just, yeah, just grateful for this time today. Yeah, thank you. I have the same impulse of how can we integrate these uh, partnerships between placemaking efforts in one place and the other, and how can there be some kind of portals or windows of, um, you know, of just, going in relationship with each other so you can um you can you can learn from each other's realities um in the way this was a great panel for the framing uh, place making the solar punk and um i i hope we can follow you guys and um support your journeys forward um i wish you all a great ending of the year and uh, lots of energy for for the upcoming year and the whole new decade so to say uh, the next talk we have on our channel is michelle bounds giving a talk on the uh, cyber physical infrastructure that is needed for humanity to um organized in the planetary boundaries <laughs> um that are there and um this is going to start in um five minutes so all the listeners can grab a coffee or a tea and um tune back in and meanwhile thanks a lot and a big applause for all the beautiful sharing today thank you jacob for the initiative it was really really interesting beautiful thank you Thank you.